What is going on guys? Welcome to Greg Lewis TV Daily, your source for daily tech news. Make sure you subscribe so you know what's going on in the world of tech. How is everyone doing? I hope you're having a fantastic day. We've got a couple of news stories for you and a bunch of questions, so let's dive right in. Our first story of the day has to do with the One UI 6 beta and when exactly it's going to come out. We've heard it's going to come out kind of early. We've heard it. It might not. We've, it keeps going back and forth, but it looks like per the folks at Sam Mobile, that it's actually gonna come out on a specific date, of course, and that exclusive date is that the One UI 6 beta for the S23 phones will be coming out the third week of July. So that's literally about a month away that the One UI 6 beta should be coming out for those phones. Now remember, with the way they do their betas, it's usually you have to sign up through Samsung members, you have to activate it, you have to download it. It ha has to have had been pushed out to your specific carrier. There's a lot of caveats. There's a chance you might not do it in time or it's not gonna be available to you, but just be forewarned that it is coming out soon. So hopefully, we'll get the actual real life version of this beta, I would guess maybe September, October, um, before they finally push it out to everybody on the S23 outside of the beta. Next up is about the Google Pixel 8 and 8 Pro. Some new information has been leaked out about the displays and it's all good information, especially one of the weaker points that I found about the Pixel phones in general is the display brightness. And it looks like that's been one of the things improved. So this information is coming from Android Authority, you can see by their headline, these are the Google Pixel 8 display specs. Flat display enthusiasts should be excited for the Pixel 8 Pro, but there are even more improvements to come. And we're gonna dive right into all of these different specs for it. So the first one is you're looking at the display sizes and you're gonna get a 6.7 display on the 8 Pro and then on the regular 8, you're going to end up getting 6.17. And then you can see what the, in blue is what it was on the Pixel 7 Pro and 7. You can also see the resolution has dropped a little on the Pixel 8 Pro, but the PPI has also gone down, unfortunately. So you see 490 versus 512, but the brightness, especially on the HDR, up to 1600 nits versus only 1000 nits on that Pixel 7 Pro. Pixel 8 and 7, you can see that the resolution is the same. The display is a little bit smaller. The nits are a lot, up, up a lot, 1400 versus 1000 nits of brightness. And the PPI is up slightly 427 to 417. And then also here you can see that the Pixel 7 was flat, Pixel 7 Pro was curved, but now the 8 and 8 Pro are now flat. And I'll be honest, I love a great flat display. It's one of the things I like the most about phones, especially candy bar phones. So it's gonna be nice to have that on there. And then also all phones on the 8 series, the 8 and the 8 Pro now 120 Hertz before, they were only 90 and 120. It was 90 on the seven and then 120 on the Pro. So that's nice to see that upgrade as well. Can't wait to get this Pixel 8 Pro in my hands to get you guys some videos on it. Very excited about that phone. Question out to you guys is what phone are you looking forward to the most? Let me know in the comments down below. Have it be a phone that's coming out this year or next. Let me know what phone kind of is getting your, your blood boiling in a good way the most in the comments down below. Without further ado, let's jump into our Q&A. Sean is asking, when do you think we will see a, a big upgrade in the Z Fold line? Because ever since the Z Fold 2 or 3 was pretty much just got camera gimmicks, processor upgrade, we haven't had a real upgrade for a while now. Supposedly, uh, uh, Z Fold 6 is when we're gonna see a fairly big upgrade in terms of change of design and cameras and things like that. Next up is Ben's Tech Tube. Hey Greg, I've heard that the Samsung is using the new hinge. Flex mode is no more. This is a huge deal, deal breaker for me. I love flex mode, isn't it a deal breaker for you? So it's not going away, uh, at least from what we heard. It's I've covered this, it, it just seems like it's not as responsive in a way as it was before. So before you'd maybe just like have, you'd activate it by just kind of closing it like that and it would activate. It seems like you might have to close it a little bit more in order to activate. That's really the only thing. Arthur's asking, would you get the Fold 5 or Pixel Fold if you could only pick one device? Me personally, since I've had a Samsung Galaxy folding phone and I haven't touched either of these phones yet, obviously, I would choose the Pixel Fold just because it's different. It's different software, slightly. It's different 
phone, it's a different form factor, it's different in a lot of ways, so that's why I would choose it. Um, for a per new person jumping in, only thing that worries me about the Pixel Fold is battery life and um, the experience maybe not being as mature software-wise as a Fold 5. The, the, the complete safe bet is definitely the Fold 5, but I would say try out the Pixel Fold, you don't like it, return it. And our last question from Gabriel, I don't mind the crease in my Fold 4, but everyone wants a Fold with no gap. My question is, if it folds completely flat, is there dust particles or such that will ruin the screen by smashing those particles between the two screens? Also, how is the software on the Pixel Fold compared to the Samsung? So I can't really answer the last one. I can only, only what we've seen on video. Um, one of the big things about the Pixel Fold is it does have that little bar at the bottom that you can interact and, and, and and multitask a little bit differently than you can on a Samsung phone. That's about it um, in terms of what, you know, there's obviously gonna be other differences, but that's what I would say is one of the bigger differences. As for your other question, I wouldn't be concerned about it being able to close flat and dust particles are gonna ruin the screen. I would hope that they work that out. So I really wouldn't worry about the new hinge in terms of it creating a more, uh, let a less tough phone. Let's put it that way. Thanks so much for your questions. If you have a question, leave it in the comments down below. Hashtag question. Have a great day. We'll see you down the road.